All right, YouTube, we're gonna play some uh, play some Death Shadow tonight. What a late start! Yeah, it is a little past my bedtime, but but it's when I have to get some games in. So let's jump into it. Just trying out a couple of new cards on the sideboard today. I'm actually in the middle of the league. Currently 3 0, so hopefully it winds up all right. Yeah, so I saw um, Magnus Lanto's 5 hour Shadow Deck with a Tasker in the board, so I just wanted to try that out. And I switched a Fatal uh, Brutal, or an Explosives with a Fatal Push, just to kind of see how I like that. Not too, too much reasoning behind it, besides the EE can just be kind of a little clunky sometimes. So I just wanted to try something a little smoother that played better with Snapcaster Mage. So we'll see how that works. Probably finish this league and do one more. My wife's just cleaning up a thing or two behind us, so she'll be done in a second, so there's a little extra noise. Alright, here we go. One second. Okay, see if my match started. Would like to play first. All right, I gotta ship this one. We don't have any lands. Jeez, good start to the night. This one. All right. It's not very good, but it does something. Put this on top to the spell. And I can shuffle it away if I'm playing against like a combo deck. Because we can ditch the uh, ditch it with the fetch land, so. Probably with the verdant catacombs from our opponent will keep this. Which is super bad because we've mulliganed. Like against like a verdant catacombs deck, being down resources is just awful. Uh, Connor O.D., thank you for the follow. Appreciate it. I just playing against Giant. What's a pretty good card to have here? Yeah, I'll get it in the morning. Give me one second. The charger is a pseudonym because I cannot find the charger. I just enter in the name of the name of the office. Okay. Right office. And I enter enter the black card is there. So if I lost the confirm button that you lost today. I 
Oh. All right, we're gonna put this untapped so that if they play another creature, we can snap caster mage and push this. We're pretty much dead in the water here. It sucks being down a resource in this matchup here. Pretty percent with Bob or Flare. <laughs> Neither, yeah. Well, at least we get a good start here. Like. We have to go push in the snap push, which kind of makes up for a little bit of our mulligan. Still way behind the eight ball. Like, if I don't find a thought seize, my opponent's just going to start playing a bunch of Bloodbraid Elves. And. That's just going to, like, bury me. Yeah. I'm going to leave these in my hand in case I draw looting. Kind of make up a little bit of the card advantage. I appreciate the follow, Connor, if you're still in the stream. I was listening to the Card Horror podcast today, and I was bummed and happy to hear about the ending of it. It was a big time of life. So I can trade with this Tarmogoyf with a Teamer Battle Rage and the Snapcaster Mage. Oh, my tea water's ready. I'm gonna oh, do that. I'm gonna get my tea, my tea, the water's ready. So I think it's better to just loot instead of... I mean, we can't even trade with the Tarmogoy because we would, we would be able to trade with it, but... Let's stitch both of these lands. This makes Goyf big, but like... We've got to play Magic. Okay, so another Snapcaster Mage is... Not great as it doesn't do anything. We don't have anything in the graveyard, but... We can ambush it in to try to double block this Tarmogoy. Probably at that point it's better to just battle rage the snapcaster, but that's gonna put an instant in the graveyard, which just grows Tom Royf. I'm just gonna chump. Going down to five is a little sketchy when they haven't played a bolt yet. And I don't know. It's just it's not good either way we cut it here, like it's kind of just what we gotta do. Okay. Any sort of follow up here is just yeah. Ditches battle rage. We have to battle back in these two games for sure. They just have more leftovers too because they didn't even bother eating that before combat. So I guess I can draw. I have, I have one more push that I could draw into. So this makes Tom really huge. They're drawing an Inquisition. This is a tough beat here. Yeah, we're just we're good now. We're gonna take six from this time of life. I can flash this thing and block, but that's just a pipe dream. So we're gonna play some fair magic, which is fun. I do enjoy playing these these mirrors. So I'm gonna take this tasker. I don't know if the tasker is any good. I'm just trying it tonight. Get these in here. The battle rages are not good. The street rates aren't great. And the Stubborn Denial, I don't want to cut a Faithless Looting. I want to keep enough counter spells to deal with, like, Liliana on three or something like that, or protect a threat, but I don't, definitely it's not something you don't want to run out on, because it can be tough to stick a threat when playing this deck.
Uh, there's hands. Okay, we're going to keep it because we have a looting and you don't really want a mulligan against Jund. Just a tough way to go. So, this hand's definitely not super, but it does some things. It's got, you know, cards. I don't really want to fetch, um, fetch steam vents. Yeah, there's another. So, I'm going to put this on the bottom. I'm going to put the angler on top in case we get Thoughtseize. We easily could cast two anglers this game. I guess I could have stacked that differently. All right, well, we're going to get the angler this turn anyway, so. I guess we're not going to because we didn't fetch. Turn one. Yeah, punished for, I just zoned out and didn't fetch a steam vents on one and it ended up costing me. All over the place tonight. If I can ditch this, I guess I could ditch the faithless looting. I want to keep both of these, and if I keep both of these and I keep the looting, then I'm more likely to cast it. So, it does kind of walk us into Liliana. Be so much nicer if we had a, a Tarma Life on the battlefield now. Now I really want looting and find a removal spell for the scavenging ooze. God, just did not find it. So we can probably just overpower this ooze. If I ditch like this serum visions and this land. Get the steam vents now. Then just full delve. Put me on Liliana me. Be in such better shape if I had a sequence correctly in the first game, which is probably what's going to cost me here. It's all right. We're going to get another one in, but. A lot of Delve cards. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. This is seven, thirteen, so I can't quite play both of them. So how many cards in the graveyard? We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. This is six and seven is 13. So we're one man short. How sad. And getting in on this Liliana is going to be tough, but I guess we just, because he's going to eat some, we should get rid of our creatures. And then like a land. He's going to ditch. We'll probably ditch our Snapcaster. And then try to and then just delve for the Gurmag Angler next turn. Try to put some pressure on this. Liliana. It is a Blood Ray Elf. Jeez. So they must just not have another land. Okay, pulse that. Yeah, we're just like super. Yeah, we're just super dead. Because I did not. It's only. It's purely because I didn't sequence right on turn one, which is going to cost me. Just eat everything that makes Snapcaster lar or this guy large. Trade here. Hope they don't have anything. They ditched the Blood Raid Elf earlier, so we're just dead as a doorknob. Yep. At least we can play Big Shadow. Oh, they ditched their land. They ditched the Shadow. We got like, what, another removal spell for this. Oh, Foam and Air Mage. Okay. Oh, so now they're going to block and bolt.
So I could just eat their bolt, because I, I, I guarantee they have a lightning bolt. But I think i got to find something to add to the board here. Oh, that is so close. I guess I just ditch this angler, ditch this inquisition. Push this. Attack my opponent's Liliana. Yeah, I mean, if we had just, we were just like set our, through Miss Sigmund's hand, I just set myself a turn behind, which ended up costing us this game. Now it's like the three cards versus the top of our deck. Yeah, eating this. Yeah, this one's my fault. They might have nothing. Oh, they're tapping mana, so they probably have something. Fulminator Mage is interesting. Oh, okay, they're going to shock me, return Bloodbraid Elf. Or return Scavenging Use, maybe. Yeah. We can beat that. Not like that, we can't. So what do they do? They just eat. Yeah, so we have to do this now and find a removal spell. Nope. Nope, we only we only have ourselves to blame for that one. I played poorly in that second game, which cost me. But what are you gonna do? Kane's Lance, thank you very much for the follow. Oh, that was quick. Took us a second to get the first match. But not this one. Uh, I would like to play first. I would like to mulligan. Jeez. Tough. Tough first couple hands here to start. At least our opponent mulliganed. We don't want this. Hopefully we're playing against like a combo deck, not like a resource-based deck. Okay, so what do they do here? They put a card on the bottom. So I kind of just want to take this. Because like if they draw a land and can play this, I can play Thought Knots here next turn. And I'm just I'm not gonna beat a turn two Thought Knots here. Okay, that's good. Hopefully they didn't rip a temple. Alright, that's not bad. Uh, we don't want either of these. Cycle the Street Wraith. We'll leave the Battle Rage. We just need a creature to pair with it. Hope my opponent misses. They didn't. Alright, so we are going to get Thought Knots here next turn. Yeah, I think I'm just going to dismember the Thought Seas. Or the. Thought Nuts here. I think I'm actually going to take two damage to do it too. Well, I guess what could I draw? I got, I got four spells that could deal with this Noble Hierarch. That seems pretty loose. Just like hope they don't Reality Smash me next turn. We hit Inquisition, so you probably just take the Battle Rage, because they're gonna like the Inquisition doesn't matter. They're gonna play a like a Reality Smasher next turn. Like arguably the only way they lose is if I draw a Death Shadow and then I Battle Rage them. Yeah. Something big now. 
The beats just keep on coming. Probably have two Eldrazi Obligators. So we're dead. We're dead in two to the Obligator because of the Exalted. So even if even if they miss here, and then if they play this, they crack me for four, then I'm dead to the Reality Smasher. So I need them to like me to find a Death Shadow, and then them to Brick. And then I need to just I need to continue to draw spells in order to stay in this game. My opponent just got a miss. Yep. If I'm like I guess if they find another land, they can activate this thing's ability. Not good. Not good at all. How's the chat doing tonight? Uh, Foothills. So that's Obligator. And so I don't have a draw because Obligator cracks me for four. And I can't, I can't draw two things to deal with the Smasher. Next turn, even if I hit Snapcaster Mage to block, well, I guess block Dismember would have done it. So much for no stream. No, I was gonna do it tonight. I didn't think I was gonna do it. Uh, I was really tired last night. All right, so I'm not really sure how to sideboard against this deck. I'm assuming we want Fatal Push. Brutality's not good. Last Hope's not good. Maybe the Tassiger's okay. Like, just get more big bodies in there. They're likely to have Graveyard Hate. But they, they have Scavenging Ooze. It's so like, maybe I can just go like this and cut these. Oh yeah, the rejection. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I always forget about rejection against Eldrazi decks also. I like rejection a lot more than a braid, Teddy. Like a braid deals with their little creatures, which we've got plenty of deal with, right? I kinda wanna be able to handle the big creatures. Probably five well, I wanna try the five delve cards, so I might as well just board them in. Probably can cut one of these because they're going to play off the top well. They're like bigger Eldrazi's. Excuse me. Yeah, let's give this a try. They don't play Chalice, right? I would bring in... Sometimes they board in Chalice. I guess I can like shave here, maybe shave another discard spell into play. Yeah, let's try that. If they if, if they have chalice, then I should have the abrades in there. It also smacks a mana dude on the play. So that makes sense. So I need to sculpt my hand out. These two anglers are kind of awkward, but we've got enough juice to power it. All we need is like one Thought Scar or one Faithless Looting. I'm gonna rely on Tear Visions to get me there. Like this, this might be a mulligan, and I would understand people mulligan this. I think it gets this like dopey deck. I just want to have big creatures because they're not gonna be able to deal with these very well. It's like good, not great. All right, so we drew another shadow of Bloodstained Liar. So let's put this on the bottom, put this on top. So hopefully we.
cycle into a little interaction. Oh, they're going to make me gain life. And they're going to hit me with this relic. Jeez. I'm going to fetch steam vents with this one. Okay. Put on the bottom, put on top. At least it's not like they're not beating me down. All right, we're just going to take his matter shape. These all do the same. Hey, Nameless, how you doing? Okay, Noble Hierarch. I should have kept that fetch land. That's stupid. I'm playing so poorly tonight. If I kept my fetch land, then I could have cast this uh, this Gurmag Angler. But now I'm just going to be behind this relic for the rest of the game. Take this Blood Bear Elf. Yeah, now I'm just like one card behind because I didn't keep the fetch land. Yeah, I'm just off, I'm off the I'm off the ball tonight. Blood Red Elf into Matter Shaper. Let's play his Field of Ruin. So if he attacks me with the Elf, we might be able to get our Shadow in play. He just cracked me for four. Okay. Maybe not. Maybe anything better of it. Yep, they did. Hey! Yeah, I saw that in the game Discord that I could do that. So I decided to do it tonight. So the question is, do I bolt myself and play two shadows? That seems kind of mopey. So I guess I'm just going to pass. Hopefully they attack me. I could draw a fetch land also. I played this game very. I played my first two games very poorly, which sucks. Squandering after you start three zero in a league, then you just like be a moron and cost yourself it. Kind of sucks. Okay, Reality Smasher. I should just see our visions again because I can draw Snapcaster Mage. Noble Hierarch. So my opponent plays Reality Smasher next turn. They're going to crack me for three. All right, this is good. So now they're going to hit me for five, and then I can set something up next turn where I can play two shadows and have lightning bolt up in order to like, oh, okay, that's not bad as well, in order to like change my life total. I both played and sideboarded poorly. If my opponent fields my red source also, then I'm in trouble. Because I can go like one, two. I guess I can't field and smasher me. Can they overpay for that? Okay. So if I bolt myself, six, block, 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 the wolf run. Yeah, I think I've got to like keep ahead of this. Because I could trade with one of these. But I think I've got to try to keep ahead of this grove in order to be able to deal with this reality smasher. 
and I've got to use my bolt in some way. And like, I might be able to set up blocks next turn and then bolt myself again. Okay. The problem is that they're just going to blow up my red source. So I think I just pass, hope to like have my red source survive and then try to battle rage over the top next turn. The game has been ugly. So now what do I do with this? Gonna push me towards Angler if my opponent doesn't empty my graveyard. So one, two, turn on casting Wolfron. Turn on Wolfron. So I can Wolfron for two. So if I bolt myself, I'm dead to the Wolfron. So I bolt myself, they just attack, 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 and then wolf run for one, and I'm at four, so I just die. So I guess I just gotta clean this up. If I just attack with the smasher, then I can put two in front of it and trade. Definitely have not played these first two games well, which is kind of annoying. And if they wolf run like aggressively, then I can play Gurmag Angler. Well, I can play Gurmag Angler if I'm lucky. Because I can still just tap their relic. Triple exalted. So now I just block with two. Trade with this thing. If my opponent messes this up, then they're gonna. I guess there's no way they can mess this up because it's a double lock. They're gonna do six and two, get one of my shadows out of there. God, this relic's been messing me up all game. Oh, they should just pop this relic now. Because if they don't, then they're going to be staring down Gurmag Angler as well. Hey, y'all, I'm struggling with the mana base from Mario Pyro. Any consistent lists? I don't really know a lot about the Mario Pyromancer sideboard to tell you the truth it's not exactly my forte but i would just go with what jerry and what jerry thompson does he writes about the deck a lot i'm just gonna play this angler i'm not gonna get greedy because like i have priority Now my attacking, because if they go, if I attack with Shadow, and they attack with one of these, I just block. Yeah, there's no sense attacking. I mean, they, like, attacking might be all right, because I can, you know, get in there for chip shot damage. And there is value to just chip shotting them. Oh, here comes a Reality Smasher. No, thought not here. That's even worse. Six. God, they're just completely eating all my creatures. So 
would they hit? They hit an obligator. What they hit? Oh, they're hitting an Eldrazi obligator. I'm just dead as a doorknob. Because they're just gonna like I need to hit a discard spell this turn. No. Get this to four. The sad thing is like I'm just not getting anywhere. I'm just barely treading water. Yeah, we're just gonna go to the next league here. That's frustrating. That is frustrating to start out so well and then end up so bad. It is my fault, I just played poorly. All right, let's open up our pity chest and hopefully play a little better in that league than we did the end of that. Oh, we got 40 play points. Awesome. Good treasure chest. Yeah, that sucks. I started out doing well, then I just did not play very well, and that sucks. I, I think I should have mulliganed that hand. I've got two Delve Threats without a Delve Enabler. Probably just would have been a, a, a smart thing to do. Yeah, that one was just all my fault. Played poorly. Played poorly, didn't make good decisions, and lost. This hand's very good, though. This is the kind of explosive hands we're looking for. We're going to play against another fair deck, so we get to, like, hopefully figure some things out. There's been an uptick of Jund on Moto a little lately. I think that's probably just because of the of the SCG. So I'm going to Serum Visions on one now because I drew the second shadow. And my mana's going to be there. Yes, I do own a dog. Yep. My th This channel's emo is a dog. Is, there's Philly Boy, the greatest emote on Twitch. So I usually don't like doing this. I'll put this on the bottom. I think we're gonna put this shadow on top. This street on top is gonna be effective or efficient. Just present big threats. I don't like serum visioning on one. It's another discard spell or faith is sleeping. Oh, well, now I'm gonna be sad. My opponent's gonna take my Gurmag Angler. Yeah, I own a black lab. I got some pictures on him on my Twitter, which is linked below. He is great. All right, I'm going to take one of these. So now I can actually play Angler and Shadow this turn, which my opponent can see. So it's odd they made that play. I guess I want to leave more spells in my graveyard. God, those lands are coming good. One, two. Um, I guess the Thoughtseize is better than the Serum Visions. We can hit a Bedlam Reveler, which I assume we're playing against Mardu. You could just be blood mooning me here though, which would be which would suck. But at least we're way far out on the board. Alright. 
We are way far ahead on the board. I am not. That's a great draw. I am not, unfortunately. Yeah, it's... I don't really have the time off for it. So, um... I just don't have the time. For, I don't have the time off. And, uh... I would like to though. It is. It, it's actually. It's a close stream. It's a close GP. So, which is always sad to miss. Yeah, you have the pyromancer. All right, we're gonna bolt this. Get rid of them. That would be. Hopefully, I don't find a way to kill my shadow. Red, blue. The blue's odd. Maybe they just misclicked. Yeah, they must have been looking for black. Yeah. It's only like three hours away from where I live. Which is kind of a bummer. So you know, we're going to turn them sideways and hope that it works out. Well, I kind of question why they took my Death Shadow with their Ditch Lingering Souls. Okay. This doesn't do anything, right? Oh, you said they're going to be able to play Bedlam Meddler? No. One, two, three, four, five. They're short. One, two, three, four. Any other land? Yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, it does suck missing ones that close, but I haven't paid too, too much attention to Standard lately, and I hardly play Legacy. I play it when, you know, when I've got the chance to. So I don't know if I actually want this Tassiger, or if I want to shave an Angler, because sometimes they bring in Graveyard Hate. But sometimes they bring in, like, Ley Lines, and that makes these really awkward. So I'm going to ditch one of these. I think the Tasker is good if the game goes long, though. Um, I don't really like my one for one removal spells. And I, I do like the brutality though, because brutality can help you swing races. Can help discard some of these delve cards that are get stuck in my hand. Yeah. Yeah. That's kind of like Yeah. Was worried about that. So if they don't have leyline, this hand's pretty solid. If they do have leyline, then this hand's not good. But they keep their hand. So no leyline. Actually, no. Shoot, I yielded. I should have. I guess I shouldn't have cycled. But Took my angler. What a jerk. So we're just going to pass. Do the bobble trick at the end of their turn. Then thought scour. Nice. I, w I mean, I like the Grixis Shadow deck. I don't know how good it is. Just because I don't, you know. I think that's worth keeping. It's something to do next turn. I don't know a lot about the format, but I have fun playing it. It, it is my speed. Because, like, they, so they kept, they kept, they let me keep my Colgon's command when they knew they were playing this young Pyromancer. So they probably have a discard spell here. So nabbing a discard spell would be pretty sweet. All right, the Bloodstained Myers are also really good because that means we can fetch around Blood Moon. Great. So it kind of made sense for them to have a discard spell there with, with what they took. Oh, man, that's tough. Because now they're going to take my command. This is not as bad as Brutality. I guess Brutality, they wouldn't have escalated it, so it doesn't really matter. This is, I can take the 
Um, I can take their command, which is nice, with one of these Snapcasters. All right, that's a good draw, but I'm just going to get, just going to get this thing out of here. And now I threaten to trade with the Pyromancer at least. What do I think of Death and Taxes? I, I don't know. Like I, I really don't play the format too, too much, Southpaw. Whenever I play against Death and Taxes, I always find it to be pretty underwhelming. All right, well, that was a good draw. So let's think. Let's think. 16. They're going to fetch the 17. The question is, do I play this Steam Vents untapped, give them one look at Lightning Bolt? Because like I can flash in my Snapcaster Mage to Thought Scour at the end of their turn, so I can have a lot more power. So what do I lose to? I lose to K Command and Lightning Bolt and a removal spell, but whatever. We can't beat that. I think... Because what happens if he just doesn't attack me? If he just doesn't attack me, then I play my Shockland attack, and they, he has to block with everything. So I go to 17. I think I'm just going to play it tapped. And then just look to flash this Snapcaster Mage in. If my opponent makes an attack, like especially the Young Pyromancer, then I'm just going to flash this in. So if he drew Bolt, he would have attacked. If he drew K Command, he wouldn't necessarily have attacked. So just 19, yeah? Did you get it? All right. Yeah, I usually show my puppy on screen, but he's, he's in the back of the apartment just conked out. It's tough to be Phil. All right, waking up now. Now we're going to play some actual decent magic. Win some matches. Yeah, we'll keep this. Hand could be anything. All right, playing as humans. Rough game one matchup, for sure. And even worse now, game two. We played Modern Eldrazi and Dex for a while. It was Turtle Depths. Turtle Depths isn't that expensive, though, right? What do they have on top? Just land. We don't want that. I'm not going to cycle these. Until I have something to do with them. I also just am not in the market to take a million damage yet. 
All right, double Thalia, Freebooter. So I think I'm going to take this Kite Tail Freebooter because if they do hit a land, they play this Freebooter, and then like I'm just so dead because they're going to take my Faithless Looting. And then I just have to take a million damage in order to operate. I could just take the Champion Parish of Hope. They don't have a turn to play, but I think we're just going to take this Freebooter. I think it's important to keep my hand flowing. Especially when we have so many duds. Like all, like all five of these cards are not really great. It's unfortunate I couldn't take two, couldn't take a Thalia there, but and they hit, which is unfortunate. So what am I taking next turn? They have Thalia Bugler. So in all reality, they could miss. I really don't want to just cycle these. All right, well, next turn we're definitely going to cycle them. So now we have Battle Rage. At least we have a way to win. Or we have a plan. It always feels kind of bad. Like cycling Street Wraith to just fish. Go five. Thought sees Bugler die to the vial. Yeah, whatever. Snapcaster doesn't do anything. Basically, just need Death Shadow at this point. Yeah. We're just dead. And that's just rough. We just didn't find what we needed and got. Got Thalion. No, we didn't really. They didn't really do anything to us. We just got wrecked. We just have a hand that didn't really come together. All right, so cards I don't want. I don't like two anglers. I don't like these street rays. I don't like these stubs. I like all of this grindy element. And this is how we're going to do it. We've been having a hard time lately with uh, Dire Fleet Daredevil out of this deck. The sideboard has been, the Dire Fleet Daredevils have been very good. Because they just know, like, that's our plan against them is to try and, uh, try and, like, outgrind the game. And Dire Fleet Daredevil is just a very good grindy card. Play first. Yeah, this hand's great. Skirmack Angler is likely not going to do a lot, but hopefully Lava Mancer on turn one is usually pretty, pretty good against this deck. This is the best card that we have for the matchup after sideboard. And they mulliganed. And we're going to pick them apart with discard spells next turn. We should be in good shape. Uh, one of my friends is being hysterical. Nice. 
Nice. Which 12 cards do you need, Teddy? This is likely going to be a double discard attack with Woo. Double discard attack with Grim Lava Mancer kind of hand. So let's take this Ariok Champion. And then I'm just going to take this. Um, take the Stallion's Lieutenant. And then just crack my opponent for one here. The unknown ability of Grim Lava Mancer is that it attacks. Just beats by Lava Man. Then we're probably going to point this K command at a creature the first chance that we get. I don't really know if I want to shatter this either vial or not. I could just play Gurmag Angler also, but it kind of shuts off my Lava Mancer. It's like my probably my best way to win. I'm just going to use my mana here. Like if they don't, if they just pass then I'm going to just shatter the vial and make them discard a card just to like get some action going. Just because I want to do something. And if they still don't do anything, then I'm just going to cast the Gurmag Angler. Destroy target player discards a card. Destroy target artifact. It's just not good to just sit here with your mana. They just not do anything. Yeah, they just discard an ancient ziggurat. And then I'm just gonna pay four mana for this angler. I still have a lava mancer activation, and I'm on the board. Plus I can snap K command starting next turn. Okay. Jeez. Put on the bottom. Probably put this on top. My opponent doesn't have a lot of mana, and we know they have at least a two drop in their hand. Likely not ever getting to that snap K command, but might be worth it. I think I did. This is like just super sick. Because then I can go Inquisition, snap Inquisition next turn. It beats me for two. So the last card's Phantasmal Image. Wait on push me. He's just not going to, right? I might as well trade my card. And if he images, he can just... Are oh, you talking about if he images my Gurmag Angler? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. I was thinking like he would image to play this thing. What is this? The reflector mage? It's kind of annoying. It's 
So what is this targeting? This probably targets my Gurmag Angler. So let's get rid of this. I lose my Revolt, but I'll get that back. So now I have to get get this Gurmag Angler back to a place where I can cast it. So I have Snap Push. Problem is I don't have Revolt. Battle Rage the Lava Mancer. Oh, you say Battle Rage the Lava Mancer, first strike, kill the Reflector Mage? Isn't that cute? It actually might be the play. Because it's not, the, this thing's never going to like. <laughs> this is annoying. It does have three toughness. Like, first strike, activate. I could also just block Battle Rage Activate. That's kind of mopey as well. Mm -hmm. I think I would rather keep my Snapcats around for a body. So I actually think I'm just going to, like, by doing this, I'm kind of giving up on Gurmag Angler. But I could just Battle Rage my Grim Lava Mancer, first strike damage, then shoot this, and then keep the push in my graveyard, and then start attacking with the Lava Mancer. Then, like, worst comes to worst, just snap push the next thing and then crack for three. Yeah, I think I want to do that. So, effectively trading. So, first strike damage. Okay. Okay, so now I'm just going to play this. Snapcaster Mage, push this thing, and then just start attacking. <laughs> it just says I want the Snapcaster in play. All right, so they drew a land. Not bad draw. So I don't know if my opponent has an out here. I guess I could, yeah. It's a Reflector Mage, that would be the start of it. But then I could still just attack with my Snapcaster. I could have Angler. I might have been able to. I wasn't necessarily, I wasn't super paying attention to that. Should focus. So I don't want to change anything on the draw. Could board another angler out and bring in this collector brutality, but collector brutality is kind of medium, especially on the draw. I think I'm just gonna keep it. The angler is always a little awkward when you draw it in conjunction with Lava Mancer.
So I'm on the draw. I have two interactive spells that cost one, another interactive spell that costs two, and a shadow. I think I keep this hand. And if we lose, we lose. Like, I get it. All right, that's as good of a draw as we're going to get. I would like to see a fetch land, but I don't know we get Blood Crypt and Thoughtseize target Thalia. I guess Thalia's not that bad. Alright, we're going to take this Oriok Champion. My opponent's keeping some greedy ones. God, if they miss a land drop here, I'm going to snap off this Abrade. Oh, another Vial, no longer going to snap off this Abrade. Well, now we're going to go like this. He's going to dismember this. And then our Shadow and our Angler are both clear. I guess I could have waited. I should have thought about that more. I think this is still right because it clears the dismember out of their hand. But I definitely could have kept this. Yeah, I should have thought about that more. I definitely don't think he sucks. I think it's a little, little worse. I mean, I cut one. Like I still want one. Here comes Dismember. Yep. I get cracked for two. I should not take too much damage here. Land would be really nice. Death Shadow. So do I have to bolt this Mantis Rider? Probably. If I bolt this Mantis Rider, at least my shadow gets in front of both of these creatures. Yep. So we're going to eight. Hopefully we draw a land. Because if I draw what is this? This is a lieutenant. It's an image. Oh, I didn't think about that. That's gonna cost me the game. Because if it had been, I should have been smarter than that. If it had been a lieutenant, then they would have just vialed it in after I used the removal spell. That was so stupid. That was so stupid. Because they would have, they would have sandbagged the lieutenant. And now I'm just like super dead. Unless I drop like battle rage. Now I'm actually just dead on the board now. Yeah, that's frustrating. I, if I, I should have sniffed that out. Like, why would they play a two? Why would they activate a two in their main phase? Like, that's the reason. I should have just... I wouldn't have had haste. I'd have been three life points higher. It would have probably been a champion. Play shadow. Play shadow pass. They get a draw step. Then I draw. I guess I can't see my next card. But I'd likely just play another shadow. We'd probably just win that game. Well... I don't know, they had a lot of draws. Oh, that's frustrating. That was my fault. Like I could have I should have sniffed out that that vial activation, I think. I think this guy plays Tron. 
I'm not sure about that. I mean, we can't log in his hand, I don't think. His hand's pretty solid. It doesn't have a threat, but it's got a little bit of every kind of interaction. Oh, playing with Lantern. All right, well, we definitely want to fetch. I actually like playing against Lantern. It gets a little monotonous sometimes, but like that's only if you play too long. Tough game one matchup, though. That kind of sucks. Guess I'll just take one of their discard spells. You like the deck or you like playing against the Teddy? There's a bridge. So they probably take my Snapcaster. I guess they don't have to, but that seems like the right play to me. I feel favored against Infect. Boggles is close. Oh, they're gonna do this just to land this, and then I'm actually then I'm actually just dead because we're cold. I'm cold at this and staring bridge resolving game one. I think Boggles is fine if you have two EEs in your board and you're like an aggressive version of the deck. Because, like, there's only a couple cards they have that matter, and they can never be, like, they can't be Battle Rage. We get a lot better after Sideboard here, though. Like, we get Engineered Explosives. That's probably, like, Lantern in general. Like, Lantern usually probably just, like, wrecks game one, no matter what it's playing against. Yeah, we should have, like, a million cards to bring in. Like, when I was keeping my numbers on this deck for a while ago, through, like, through 150 matches, I think I played Boggles, like, seven or eight times and was, was handling them. But... Uh, I think I'm going to mulligan. Yeah. I have a discard spell on one, but if they have a ley line, then my hand just doesn't do anything. This hand's not much better, but at least we're going to see a lot of cards. EE on one is good. I'm actually not going to cast that bobble because I don't want them to. I don't want to draw the engineered explosives, and then have that or crack it, then have them see it. They could have two discard spells. They're just going to take the Mox. Just slow them down on mana. Because if we slow them down, the, the more we slow them down, the better the EE is. They're drawing another Spire. Okay, so draw a Sanctum next turn. Their Pixis is there. Oh, they Pixis themselves? No, they Pixis both players, right? Okay, so then this... So they drew the Spire, this is gone. One, two, three. Okay, so we can Angler. And we can EE next turn, which is very nice. So we got Angler plus EE plus... Oh, they milled my EE. Oh. Zoned out there for a second. Sorry, right, we got a rejection. Okay, so... Let's 
So there's the ancient stirrings. Okay, so they're gonna bridge next turn. They played the spire of industry. Okay, so I know their hand. Here we're just gonna keep making land drops because we're gonna need them in order to cast. Skirmag Angler. We get to reject something. One, two, we're one card off if we get to Ceremonious Rejection something here. This Tezzeret's going to be a big problem though. They can word next turn. All right, punished for getting it tapped. I was nervous about the five fives from this Tezzeret. There's a lot of ways that if they don't play this Tezzeret this turn that we can get them. They don't have a mana source here. Like they just have another, oh, they drew a bridge. Oh, the shadow can still attack. Jeez. So just shatter shock myself and we got him. That was a solid rip. Crack you for ten. That was a good rip, ladies and gentlemen. <clears throat> what do we have coming after that? Oh, Murdo can't handle it. Another shadow. Yeah, like we just dead as a doorknob. I wonder if I'm crazy to like want to shave an angler. You can definitely get glutton on anglers in this matchup. <laughs> I don't know what I'd bring in. I don't know if you want bolt for like a little bit of reach. Could see boarding out the islands, then bringing in two bolts. I don't know. I just feel like I get so sometimes I just get so glutton on anglers, especially against these combo decks because you only need one angler because they can't kill it. I don't know if this is right, but I'm gonna try it because like sometimes the bolts give you like a backdoor way to win. So like while wow, this might be wrong. We'll give it a try. This hand's very good. Whoa. He chose to not play first. Oh yeah, we saw Tezzeret, that was dumb. There's a zoner now there. Um, I think that's worth keeping. We're gonna get two more draws at a land. They drew, that's impressive. That's bad. They're not going to discard spell us on turn one because, well, they can play Mishra's Bobble. So they're going to play Lantern on one or they're going to go Bobble 
into Thoughtseize. I think they're going to go Lantern, but I'm still just going to take this Ensnaring Bridge. Because they likely will be able to get to, like, get this or this before I can get the bridge down. No, the K command, which makes me feel kind of dumb. So this is the lantern. No, they're going to go bobble. Okay. Whoa. So now they're definitely playing this lantern. Oh, they drew another bobble. Yeah, which warms the stroke? Yeah. I think if I play this weekend, I'm actually going to play one more stroke than I've been playing. Because, like, strokes good against the control decks. And, like, the big way that I lose to the, um, to, like, the Tron decks after sideboarding is to Thrag Tusk. No, nope, that's fortunate. I lose the Thrag Tusk a lot. And Disdainful Stroke also deals with all of their, like, big dumb creatures and their payoffs. So here comes Lantern. All right, so we're drawing a Thoughtseize. They're just going to let that happen because it's not a land. I can't imagine that they would sh shuffle this. Didn't we board out a land? But if they have a mill rock, playing a mill rock here would probably be good. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to play another disdainful stroke this weekend. Probably over the tasker. Like the tasker is probably just too cute. I kind of want to take this needle because they're just going to needle my street wraith. They're kind of a ways off of casting this. Yeah, we're just going to take this needle. I bought out a land often enough. Like, I bought a land out a surprising amount of time, Teddy. Okay, so. So they have discard spell plus. I don't need to take the word. They can't do anything with the word. Right? We knew their top card. Their top card didn't do anything with the word. If they sacrifice their artifacts, they don't do anything. We would much rather, I think, get my threat going and have Street Wraith going. Yeah, see, like now. And now they're just like dead. They're not just dead, but. They're not drawing a land next turn. They can't whir for anything. We're going to crack them for 14 here with a lightning bolt. And like there's their land, so we're going to discard spell them. Yeah, see, they have now they have to do that because they can't let me draw. But now they're just dead because I bolt myself. Yeah, you had to take the needle because as soon as you got Street Wraith online, that's how this happens. <clears throat> yeah, like I think I'm probably going to end up cutting this this Tassiger for another disdainful stroke. Like I want to be able to beat Tron humans and then like maybe one more card for the control deck. So maybe turn this collective brutality into another last hope. No, because the, the needle, because so I'm thought seizing them. They have the needle in their hand. When it switches back, the, the street is on top of my deck. So when it switches back to them, they play the needle. And then I can't cycle my street race. All 
I mean, I might be tired and have missed that, but I, th I think that's what the board state was. I will keep this hand. Pretty explosive. Potentially a turn two angler. Okay, we're playing against a control deck. Oh, we're playing against blue white. Gross. So this matchup has gotten better. Like now they're playing like Terminus and all that garbage. So let's go get a Steam Vents. Discard spell is great. Yeah. Probably leave this Serum Visions in there. You know, we're likely just going to be snapping back the Thought Seas. It is nice that we got to draw the snot, the thought seas. So now we can like potentially go like, wow, they missed a land drop. Bane Slayer Angel. All right, so how do I kill my opponent before? Three, three counters. So they're not going to gain any life from this timely reinforcement, so that doesn't really matter. I think what matters is making so my battle rage resolves. So I'm going to take this logic knot. Go get a watery grave. Play this, because next turn I can deal 8, 16 damage. So if I draw like a Street Wraith or something, I'm in really good shape. Opt, okay. So that's what they drew. Put a card on the bottom, they drew a Colonnade. Jeez. Sees. All right, how do I lose? I don't think I can. I actually just don't think I can lose from here unless my opponent top decks a path. So if they top deck path, how do I deal the most damage? Because I can deal 16 and snap battle rage snapcasters is lethal. So. I don't think I can lose, but I'm just going to take this Lightning Helix because the six life from this isn't going to matter. I don't really want to get burnt out. So here comes the timely, and we got him. Okay. And they drew the land. All right. So we know their hand, right? Their hand is now. Well, I guess we can just check for good measure. Yep. Yeah. How you doing tonight, Cody?
Easy there, Cody Jones. You're getting all aggressive. You don't even know that guy, and you're already asking him, asking him for sexual favors, dude. There's no asking for sexual favors in this chat unless you take him out to dinner first. God, I expect more from you, Cody Jones, Mr. Sword. All right, so we want the problem. Okay, so this tasker has been really awkward because they're going to bring in Graveyard Hate. I guess they're just guys. So they're not going to bring in Graveyard Hate. We're just going to pretend they're not because I want to play with it. I want to make sure that it's worth it. All right, so we're going to cut our bolts, cut our pushes. Try to cut more cards. Cut our battle rages. Yeah, well, I saw I saw Magnus Lantos top eight with uh, they're not top eight five zero with a Death Shadow deck that had Tasker on the board. I'm not a huge Lava Man person as someone that usually likes to leave in. Um, not a big Lava Man person if I'm leaving in my Delve cards. But it might be better than like a Street Wraith. Or I guess I could actually, no, I want another Fatal Push if my Dismembers are going to be spread thinly because of uh, whatever it is. Because of um, Bane Slayer Angel. Looting is not great, but I think I need them in order to just enable my quick delve threats. It is one of the odd parts about having looting in. I've also got more graveyard recursion, like the Colagons commands and the Lilianas, to make up for that a little bit. Yes, but he's cool, Cody. We talk more. Teddy is very cool. Teddy is my friend. I just hate Lava Man when I want to play Delve cards. I get what you're saying there, Teddy. I think this is like a jam as quickly as you can if you have Stubborn Denial. I don't really want to go play patiently against a deck with like Bane Slayer Angel in it, especially. All right, we're going to keep this. Suzanne's good, not great, but... Gonna wait until turn two to cycle the Street Wraith. It's actually pretty reasonable. If this was a black land, this hand would be really good. All right, so my opponent's hand is pretty awful. This is what the Jeskai decks are doing nowadays. This isn't what Ben does. Ben doesn't play Opt. That's nice. That is really nice. Put on the bottom. I don't think we want this. We're just going to Thought Seize. I don't really want to run my shadow out there while I can get bolted. We'll just take an opt. Next turn we can do like shadow plus serum visions with street wraith. Yeah, when we when we drew that fetch land, it really helped us out. So my opponent just has nothing going on now. Oh, I guess they have one card we don't know. I go to eight, probably. Actually, uh, yeah. We we committed. Oh geez.
As long as our opponent didn't hit something in the next couple draw steps, we should be in pretty good shape. With potentially being able to kill my opponent over the next couple turns here. Yeah, is it is this like Jeskai deck normal? What is this? Is a wrath? Yeah, it is. That sucks. It's not that. I mean, we have the K command, so it's not that bad. But yeah, yep. So we're gonna bring the shadow back. Now it's going to be tough to kill our opponent before they get online here. Because, like, this now this it's Ancestral is ticking down, this Colonnade's looming. If I find a Fatal Push, I can be aggressive. My opponent just goes like Land Bane, Slayer Angel, and then Hurl. Okay. Jeez. So what could their last card be that would matter? How do I kill them in two attacks? Can I kill them in two attacks? If I put this Street Wraith on top, check what they got. Cycle down to seven, cycle down to nine. I go to four. Then if I go like, they go to 11, then I just shock them. Yeah, so we're gonna put this on the bottom, put this on top. See what you got. Uh, Snapcaster Mage. Okay. Well, they're two mana off the colonnade, right? So I'm going to attack. So let's see what they do with this. Now I likely have to take it slow. They click on the bottom. All right, so they blocked. That's a good play from them, I think. Just trying to survive until this colonnade, this ancestral comes off. All right, so they hit a land drop. Well, we could. We could have. Like, we, we had the lineup there. It would have depended on what our if our opponent had nothing going on, right? So now I can do this. I can make them discard a card and return Angler to my hand. Or should I wait for them to wrath me to do that? Probably should wait for them to wrath me. Because they can go, they're gonna draw four cards next turn. Then go like snap wrath, yeah. What is this? Ugh. 
Thank you for joining us. It just helps your stream. Hey, thank you there, X Dingus Khan. I keep my notifications down because it messes my YouTube videos. So sometimes I don't always hear those, but I appreciate that. <clears throat> and I just fire up colonnade, right? No. Oh, all right. Well, let's force a little action on their end step. Let's beat this guy, guys. These control decks aren't awful. Aren't awful matchups. Ooh, that was big. So let's start with this. Like Jess guy is winnable. Blue white is not winnable. Uh, they just draw nothing off of their off of their ancestral. What is this? Can't take it home with us. Spell Queller. Oh, well, that just kills me because they fire up Colonnade. All right, well, that's good to know they've got Spell Queller. It's a different angle. Yeah, the Terminus decks are tough for sure. Or this Terminus is better than Verdict. Like we'd rather play against Terminix than Verdict for sure. Okay. So they have spell colors. They have spell colors. I'm likely to just kind of go like this and then cut all of these. EE is probably not worth it. Because they probably just don't have enough targets for it. I think we're going to go like this. Probably should board in one more Fatal Push. Shoot, I should have boarded in another push. That was not good. I'm going to grab a glass of water. I'll be right back. I would like to play first. Uh, this hand's alright. We're gonna keep this. I really don't like mulliganing a lot in this matchup. I am gonna bobble my opponent to just get a little bit of information before I scry, though. I like cycling these bobbles as soon as possible. Just because they're, you know. Field of Ruin, so I should fetch balanced. I'd probably fetch the full Grixis set here. All right, we'll keep a Serum Visions. Hopefully, get like a discard spell here. Alright, we're going to cast this because it's expensive. We can double spell next turn. Another thing about this Brutality I don't like is it costs two. Okay, so they do have a spell caller. Alright, so let's just take this negate. 
because I can hold up. I want to have all these resolved, and then kind of I can. I'm gonna find a way to be able to squeeze them with this. So they drew a colonnade to squeeze their mana. And if they hit something to deal with this shadow, they have to do it on this turn. All right, last hope's really good. Gurmag Angler is really good. We can play that right into right into um, spell caller and be fine. I actually play Angler and Liliana next turn, which puts on a lot of pressure. Let's get in here first. Actually, I'm probably not going to cast the Liliana because of the spell caller. Let this go. Play this island. I'm just gonna like shock them, make them discard a card at the end of the turn, because that makes my shadow like close to lethal, and if they respond to it, huh. So this tells me I think they're trying to block. I still kind of want to use my mana, because if I don't use my mana, then I feel like I'm losing. It doesn't take a lot for them to just go, like, untap, bolt, kill, or bolt, fire up, colony, attack. So I just kind of want to keep leaning on them and putting pressure on them. So if I go, like, shock, discard, they probably dish a land. So I have three out of five cards. Because in all reality, I'm not bringing anything back with this Colagon's command anyways, because they're going to path my creatures. And if they actually kill something next turn, I can bring it back with Liliana because they want a crypt to command out. So we're just going to make shock them, make them discard a card. <clears throat> I don't know what Hydrate Bot means, Cody. Okay, so they discard planes. Whoa. Was that a good one or was that a good one? Oh my god, that works out so well. That's five mana and everything. Holy shnikes. So now even if they don't block... Oh, nice. It's a good bot. So now they're going to cryptic. We're going to stroke it. And then if they don't block, we're just going to play Liliana. We're going to play Liliana no matter what. Because even if they wrath the board, then I get to buy something back next turn. Yeah, I think I want to be on a second stroke. Stroke's good against like the control decks, and it's good against Tron. I kind of want my sideboard to just be control decks, Tron, and Inhumans. It's like all I want to deal with. You did, <laughs> and you say it proudly. Put a card on the bottom. That's good for the home team. Whew. A disdainful stroke is good. Yeah, definitely want two of those. All right, last match of the night. Hopefully we can end up with a 4-1. We went 3-0 and a 3-2 to start, which felt bad. <clears throat> oh, on the play, which is great.
and I will keep his hand. A little slow, but it's got a little bit of everything, so his hand's like probably good against everything. Like we have two discard spells, a removal spell, and a counter spell. So there's not many, many decks in the format. This is just a complete dud against, and we have a threat. This might be one of them, where it is just a complete dud. Alright, so we're going to take this Neonate, because it guarantees putting a bridge in the graveyard. Even though the supplier sees more cards. So the problem is if I don't Inquisition them and I don't Lightning Bolt them, then I'm not going to be able to... I'm not going to be able to cast this Angler. The problem with all this is that I'm hitting a Bridge or a Venge Vine, which aren't very good cards to bring in anyways. So one, one, two, three... Make so I can angler next turn. My thought sees. But I need to use my mana. So as sad as this is, I'm gonna bolt this. I'm gonna bolt it before I discard because it might be right for me to hit the bridge. I don't want this in play. Like there's nothing for this to hit right now. Okay, so they did hit a bridge. Another stitch of supplier. Now I just take this grave crawler. And then we just play Gurmag Angler with Stubborn Denial up and just hope they miss. Alright, well there's step one. Oh, they hit a Viscerous Seer. Viscerous Seer is so good that I might have to dismember it. Because if they hit anything, it turns into two zombies. This is already two zombies. I'm going to six. It's just one zombie, the only one bridge. Yeah, we're just going to get rid of this now before this thing kills me. Because this makes every single one of their draws good for like the rest of the game. This is not a side. This is not a deck that I have a very good sideboard against. I don't know how important it is to sideboard against this deck. I don't think a lot of players will play this at a PTQ. I think you're going to see a lot of fair decks at, at like a PTQ. PTQ would probably be just like the top of the metagame, if I had to assume. There's the Bloodstained Miner. Are you just getting the F we're getting the F6 value or what are we doing? So I'd love to hit a Death Shadow off the top here. There's a cathartic reunion. That was just a regular ballista. And a grave crawler. Oh man. So I need to go like Shadow Battle Rage. Now we're just dead. Because we can't attack and they're going to outrun us there. Yeah, I don't know if Leyline is good enough. Because, like, Leyline is so awkward. I don't know how good the deck is yet. Because, like, I, I, I beat it pretty easily earlier today. But if I wanted to hedge against this deck, I'd probably play, like, a... Like a second E or or an engineer or a radiant flames. It's kind of my only card that's any good. Stub doesn't seem great. 
Yeah, I don't have any because I don't have my any. I don't have any uh graveyard here. Snapcaster Mage is pretty slow. Do I have any cards that are better than Snapcaster Mage? Maybe use Lava Mantos because they can kill themselves. These Snapcaster Mages seem awful. I'm going to go with these. Just more removal, clear blockers, or push my own threats if I need to. No avoid be made. It just never it never triggers, right? Because it never and then nothing ever dies, or and the ley line is also not in the deck. Um, Joy two one nine, thanks for the follow. I appreciate that. And fun boys, if you're still in the chat, I don't know how to sideboard against this deck. I don't really know the best way to combat this. <clears throat> so you're, you're talking about playing Leyline of the Void in the main of your deck, Dark Inferno? That seems, seems a little extreme, right? Okay, I would like to play first. I think this hand's decent. We have a Death Shadow, which is really important. I think now we're just going to dig to Battle Rage. Because, like, Death Shadow plus Battle Rage. Yeah, well, you wouldn't main deck them, right? Like, you can't. Like, there's so many decks. Like, you're going to main deck those and play against Tron and be like, what am I doing with my life? Yeah, that's still only, like, what, 25% of the metagame? So now we just take the discard outlet. Okay, Thoughtseize is nice. We can't necessarily deploy it next turn because they'll just ballista it unless we find a Street Wraith. If we go Street Wraith into Fetch Land, then like we're doing it. So here comes Wooded Foothills into Visser Seer. Yeah, so this is Creature Decks or Snapcaster Decks. All right, so we're going to hang on. So I can play both of my creatures next turn. All right, so there's the battle rage. So we have a way to win. What am I taking? I'm probably taking Hanger Backwalker from this hand. Because walking, like, we don't really care about walking blitz. The Hanger Backwalker could be annoying, especially if we want to chip in. Like next turn, we're gonna put nine power on the board, drawing a battle rage. Creatures decks would turn. Creatures decks would turn it off. I would risk it and keep bridge. So wait, are you saying if you play this deck, you would have play bridge in your main deck? Oh, I see what you're saying. Okay, I thought you were talking about my deck, like, or you were playing a deck that was playing this much graveyard hate in order to fight. Um, playing this much graveyard hate in order to, or a deck that played main deck ley lines to come combat graveyard decks. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. All right. I get what you're saying more. I know this deck plays ley line on the board. All right. So we don't have any snapcaster mages. So this doesn't matter. We're gonna just pump fake. We're gonna pump fake some interaction here. Yeah, I get what you're saying. 
Alright, so you scoop it up. That's another thing, the issue with this deck is like, and I, I don't know, this deck this deck obviously hasn't been hashed out because it's brand new. But like, you just have so many inept draws. I think we're going to keep it the same. Hopefully we can end this on the 4-1 tonight. That would be great. Hey, I've been watching all your greatest videos this week. This is all we can get to build it myself. Thanks for all the great content. Well, I appreciate it, Jay Huey. I appreciate you very much. All right, so we're going to keep this because we have Battle Rage and Death Shadow. And we can just ditch it. If they have a really explosive draw, we can just play a shadow out to remove some bridges. Okay, that's a good draw. Oh, you can post it. I don't know if I'm going to look at it while I'm playing here, but... All right, so we're going to take this Visage here because that makes the deck go. I don't think they're going to be able to Bushwhacker kill us. Oh, shoot. So they still have a Bushwhacker. Yeah, dude, post it. Cody Jones wants to know. Cream draw. I'm working on it. Oh, so they just did, wow. This is great, right? So they have Mountain, Bridge, and X. This guy's just playing like a like a doofus, though. Like, this isn't how you play against Death Shadow. Like, like he should just try to, like, one-shot me. Because if, if you chip in against Death Shadow, you just enable their game plan. Like, maybe he's got a plan. I'm going to look stupid here. Okay, Viscerous here in the Grave Crawler. Stop it. Okay, come on. Okay, so the last card's Bridge. I just have to figure this out because I should be able to. I should be good here. So they only have two bridges in their graveyard. So my opponent's gonna go. What I could do is just sat like push the viscerous here. They go. They probably sack bushwhacker grave crawler, and they have eight zombies. What if I attack? Because they're just going to go. If I attack with both, I believe I have to shock myself. Because if I shock myself, then I can play Dermag Angler. Does that mean I should only attack with one? Hey. Pokemon. Maybe I just play Gurmag Angler and pass. Yeah, I think maybe I just play the Angler and pass the turn. Or push the Viscerous here, make them do all their stuff. Because their last card is Bridge from Below. So that it's not like they can do two spells. Yeah, I think I think we push the seer and then let them react. Because they're gonna sack Gravecrawler, that's a free roll, because then they can block with it.
Okay, so they sack the bushwhacker. They put a car on the bottom. They sack the fissures here. So shock six, attack with one shadow, play two anglers, be at four. There's no draw they can have. They put a card on top. So what could they have drawn? They could have drawn like Faithless Looting. Faithless Looting makes sense because they can put more zombies into the graveyard. But then they would have to find like one enabler. I think I am. So let's go. You go in both of these. Oh, you're saying, like, yeah, he has to block with both. That's putting the pressure on him. And then if he blocks with two, I guess there's no difference between blocking. Attacking with one is the exact same as attacking with two. So we just put the pressure on. And then everything just gets worse the longer the game goes. Yeah. Because there's no reason you either attack with both or nine. Yep. Get out of my face. All right, good way to end the stream. Good way to end the stream. I did think this list felt kind of garbage, though. Like, let's pull this back up. Like, this Tasker was awful. This Disdainful Stroke's great. I think I want one more. I think I want one more of these. I just like the counter magic. So like this tasker is gone. And then like maybe I'll just cut this collective brutality and play one more last hope. Or one more like maybe like a removal spell. Because my PTQ this weekend, I think there's going to be a lot of fair decks. I think there's going to be some fair decks, control decks, Tron, and humans. Because like everyone at all these like PTQs, they always play like fair decks, Tron, or, or I think like best decks. So I think that's where we're going to be. So I think I want to cut like these two cards and then play like a third card for something here. I don't exactly know. Hang on one second. I don't exactly know what I want that to be. I should be back later this week. My wife's going to go visit her family. So I should be... Um, I should be back here. Yeah, I think I, I really like the counter spells, Nameless. Hang on one second. Cabrillo. I was putting that on there so when we're done here. No, I think so. I like the I like the fourth stem. And then I like having the rejections and the strokes because, like, I I want to beat Tron. And, like, I was playing one stroke and found that I was losing a lot after sideboard of Thrag Tusk. Like, Thrag Tusk just buying time. I do not beat Tron frequently. And maybe I'm, like, like I, I probably beat Tron probably 45 to 40 percent. Of matches and maybe I'm just like not evaluating let me turn my video off here maybe I'm just like not evaluating